Hello world, it's Vagabond here and my friend Arseni. Today we are going to the so-called Chekmakhate. This is the defense line that was constructed in western Istanbul to protect the city from possible Nazi invasion during the Second World War. It's quite a long way to that point because we are currently on the opposite side of Istanbul. We are on Anatolian side of the city. First thing first, we're going to get to this point uh, somewhere here must appear the approximate route that we are going to take. This eastern district of Istanbul is called Kurtköy. This is the way it looks. It's full of some apartment complexes. Actually, on the way to the subway station, we are passing by a lot of cafes, places where we can technically have a breakfast. We found a place where we are supposed to have breakfast today. This is going to be such a lovely sandwich. And for our city, it's also going to be the burek with cheese. Okay, the first means of transport that we're going to use today is going to be the subway. They mentioned the year of the opening of subway stations here. So it was opened here just last year. Pretty new line to Sabiha Gökçen Airport. <laughs> Alright, we are changing from subway to metrobus, another means of transportation in Istanbul. There is such a thing as travel ladder because the passage is so long. For the first time, Istanbul subway looks like a labyrinth of passages. But after some time, you kind of know where to go and it does not look that frightening as in the very beginning. Alright, this is the Istanbul metro bus which is effectively two bus lanes separated from the highway. I badly want to say that we made it to the outskirts of Istanbul, but this is not even the outskirts. Also, it took us 1.5 hours to ride on the bus to the terminal station of this so-called metro bus. But Istanbul, it still continues for tens of kilometers westbound. This is somewhere in the middle between the center and its actual uh, city limit. 60 kilometers from our home and it's still 40 kilometers left. So we have to take two more buses from here. This is our bus actually, we are running for that. We are in the town of Çatalca, but rather say not the town, but still the district of Istanbul. While traveling around Turkey, you can see the portraits or some billboards dedicated to Mustafa Kemal Atatürk literally everywhere. Atatürk is basically the founder of modern-day Turkey. Even on the main street of such provincial towns, you can see many placards depicting his portrait, some of his quotations. It's a very prominent person in Turkey. All right, we made it to the first village on our way, have the first point of today's exploration. It took us four hours from home to get here, just by using public transportation. Yeah, we are finally hungry and decided to get some local chorba. This is basically the lentil soup, which is usually served with this piece of lemon. Welcome to the Turkish countryside, which looks pretty decent, by the way. This is the road between random villages 20 minutes left to our first and probably the most significant point of the journey while walking towards our first point we accidentally encountered another peculiar location this is the wartime bunker part of the fortification system of East Thrace located just next to the country road and we have such a golden opportunity to get inside it. It can also be called blockhouse and it was constructed in early 40s to fortify the surrounding area of Istanbul to prevent potential German like Nazi assault. Давай телефон. Вот да, ты вот только это помещение, я не знаю, чан с водой, наверное, должен был быть. Но, короче, тут ничего нету, тут просто небольшое помещение под землей. Тут тоже какая-то уёмкость. Ну, наверное, для воды. How it looks 
from the outside actually it's pretty massive okay right now we are approaching the possible entrance to the tunnel the most desirable part of these fortifications there is a lot of sharp bushes that i'm trying to avoid for some reasons i forgot to bring glow this apparently we found the portal the entrance portal of the tunnel this tunnel is interesting well just by itself but also we must find the remains of the railway that was placed in this tunnel we don't have any protection from water aside from this uh, trash packages at least it's like better than than nothing so we're gonna try to put it like here but there is not that much water currently but it's still pretty muddy like dirty that's why we still decided to use this kind of packages okay we're just trying to step on stones to avoid the water it seems that somebody already used my technology here wait a minute but failed oh you see the packages right yeah well, hopefully we will be more successful in this technology than previous explorers. At some point we are lucky that we are here right now, while there is not that much water. Hopefully we will not end up in some deeper places. So we have reached this kind of a pile of stones, which blocks the water. Oh wow, look, this is the Nazi sign, the swastika. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh -huh. there is quite a lot of... Oh! <laughs> So at this point the tunnel becomes a little bit more like narrow. We are actually looking for the train or something. The collapsed part of the fortification. And what's here? I think the same. Не понятно, don't you think that these were just like the the passages that were supposed to be constructed but were not ever constructed? I was thinking about it, but I don't know. We are actually going lower and lower. Like downstairs? Yeah, yeah. No way, it seems that we have just found the train. Is it like the concrete bulk? Yes, seems That like literally it. like fell inside, mm -hmm. like from the top. So this is the car, probably like a part of the railway system of this fortification. Arseni told me that you see the passage goes left and right. The railway was here and somehow like in the very middle is this car. Can we see the wheels? Yeah, there are the wheels, they are completely rusty. And actually the layer of rust is so thick. It's been here for like 80 years. Ah. It's uh, it's the mud, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the second car that we have found in the tunnel. Uh, right behind this car must be another sort of the cargo wagon. This is the second car that we have found. It looks more like a dump car or a gondola. It has this kind of the wooden part in its structure, in its construction. And yeah, they probably loaded some like uh, soil or what straight here. Do you think we can move it? <laughs> I like, think no. No way. no way, it's totally like stuck. Both of my packages uh, have already like gone. The ones of our Sini too. Alright, it seems that we have made it to the very end of this passage, which uh, terminates with this sort of this spinning staircase leading somewhere on top. Frankly speaking, it doesn't seem to be safe to walk upstairs. You clearly see that it's completely rotted. Our protections are now to be pretty weak, so we are using another trash package to protect our shoes. Well, the shoes are actually already dirty. Well, it could be worse again if there was more water. Arseni has just found the sign that dated back to 1944. Maybe it was the person who actually constructed this fortification. Probably. We don't know exactly. Oh, dates back to 1957. Um, it's written in Turkish. We don't really know the language, so we can only try to guess the meaning when we return uh, to the area when we we'll have like access to the internet to use translator. We have found the sort of the collapsed part of the tunnel, and what we do not understand, at least right now, is why. There is the railway on the second level of this kind of the, I don't know, tunnel shaft. 
What's this? Any guess? Maybe there was like another entrance, uh, like not the one that we used. So we are continuing exploring the tunnel and at some point it splits on three separate tunnels. So we're gonna start from going just straight. The same stairway as we've seen before. But collapsed one. Yeah. It must have been the exit from the bunker, but as soon as the stair is collapsed, there is no way to get up. I don't feel that comfortable to walk because I don't have any protection right now. But I'm still trying to catch up with Arseni. Oh my god. I don't think that we should interrupt them. Okay, found another kind of the wagon. But it was a pretty long walk to be honest. <laughs> This system of fortification, this particular tunnel, this is its main entrance. You can probably see the exit from here. There is the another kind of tunnel with the railway track that runs perpendicular to this one. Uh, but if you go straight forward, like straight ahead, then this main passage splits on free one and uh, all of them terminate in like, let's say two, three hundred meters. The places where they terminate, there is this kind of the spinning staircase that is leading on top. That staircases were too rotted. It was too dangerous to try to climb them. That's why we get getting out the tunnel the same way as we entered it. If there is gonna be another episode of this exploration that would be filmed in another day, not today, because it's like 3 p.m. right now and uh, just like three hours before the sunset not that much filming opportunities oh by the way do not forget to subscribe to my channel click the like to this video and also follow the link in the description that is leading to my patreon account because there i publish some content which is unpublished on youtube it's been one month since our first visit to Chakmakhate. Again, me and Arseni, we are continuing exploring the Istanbul fortifications. But today we are going to focus on the fortifications located close to Boyuk Chekmenje district of Istanbul. So we are currently closer to the residential area of the city. Behind us is the well-known bridge of Boyuk Chekmenje. The bridge that that construction dates back to Ottoman Empire. It still exists here in Istanbul. And uh, today we are starting our exploration from this location because if you look here, you can notice one of the bunkers that was literally installed into the construction of the bridge. But it's not clear if it will be able to get closer because it seems that the bridge is under reconstruction. This bridge was constructed in 1566, so the very middle of 16th century. Probably it's not its first reconstruction, but anyway, the bridge is entirely closed. So I will not be able to get on it and get closer to this bunker. The bunker does not seem to be reconstructed. So this bunker appeared here almost 400 years after the construction of the bridge. So it's abandoned as well as other bunkers of Chakmakhate. It seems that the reconstruction of the Ottoman bridge is carried out with the support of the sister city of the Boyuk Chekmedje, German sister city called Gelsenkirchen. In Germany, there must be a huge Turkish diaspora, so they probably participate in the reconstruction, in the investment into reconstruction. Very close to the bridge, just a couple of hundred meters away, there is one of the most uh, well-maintained bunkers these bunkers are also called korugans in Turkish. As you can see, it is painted for one of the festivals that was happening here, probably. That is actually a very nice example of the integration of such a boring concrete structure into the urban environment. So just use it as open-air art exhibition. And here we can check the insides for this tiny window. So inside there is some kind of the storage, actually nothing serious. By the way, the district or let's say the town of Buyuk Chekmeja has a lot of sister towns. Among them I would uh, notice three remarkable ones. Uh, this, this and this that belong to Northern Cyprus. But Northern Cyprus is only recognized by Turkey. So you are, you are unlikely to see the mentioning of this kind of the unrecognized country elsewhere. These are the Istanbul cats. I think Istanbul has the highest concentration of cats. In fact, not all of the bunkers survived the development of Istanbul and some of them are being destroyed 
to construct new residential complexes. And this is what happened with this bunker. So it was literally destroyed. Land around seems to be empty. So it probably will be used for the construction of a new uh, apartment complex. So we can only see the remains of the foundation of the bunker. There is only some trash. There are no entrances anywhere underground. And that's it. So this spot is completely useless right now. By following such a picturesque passage, we are approaching the next Korogan, which is the most integrated one into urban environment. I mean, it is located right next to the road that connects Istanbul, let's say, with the rest of the westbound world. It seems to me that this bunker was one of the most significant in Istanbul because it is located on the top of the hill and you can clearly see the surrounding area from this point. Uh, also, it is located next to the main road that leads towards the city. So that's why it has strategic importance. So the entrance used to be literally here, but now it's blocked by this kind of fence, the door and a pile of trash. So this bunker is only maintained outside. Inside, there are literally bare walls. There is an interesting quotation of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk on the wall of this bunker. It says, peace at home is peace in the world. Actually, many of Turkish Korogans located on private property, but it's still possible to access them. Like now we just directly address the owner of the property who was smoking outside. He allowed us to get in. So there he is and there he is. The bunker, which is used as a storage, has its own number 284. It was built on 25th of October 1941. It could be an interesting tourist trail to follow all of the bunkers located uh, in this kind of the area. So their starting point is where we were at the very beginning of today's adventure at Boyukchikmetje Lake. And they strengthen straight to the coastline of Black Sea. So there are dozens of such bunkers. This bunker was constructed later than previous one. Also, it's located just half of the kilometer away. This one was built in 1942. And apparently this one is accessible, finally. There is some strange bottle with uncertain substance. Yellow one is like urine or something. Inside the bunker is the living place of probably a homeless individual. There is a lot of bottles, probably for like rainwater or something. This is the sleeping room. There is the bed and there is nobody. On the right, it's like another compartment. Okay, this room actually might also be split on two. Okay, even if there is another room, we will not get there. Okay, we climb to the very top of this bunker and from here you can clearly understand that it is overgrown with grass and it's very hard to identify these bunkers from satellite pictures. That's why I haven't marked all of the bunkers on the map and I missed this particular one. However, the corners of these bunkers are still visible. They, they have more or less the same shape which is identifiable and that's why we can still discover them on some satellite pictures. Okay, we have approached the next Kurugan. I see that it's likely to be a storage according to these sort of boxes on top. And this seems to be the cleanest bunker that we have seen so far. Well, wow, there is the system of ventilation with this kind of pipes. The entrance underground, apparently. Do you see any ladder? Yeah, now I see the bottom, but mm, we cannot get there. There is no ladder. Uh -huh. Okay, we have finished the exploration of Korogans, AK bunkers. That was the second part of our exploration. One month ago, we explored the tunnel. It's pretty interesting attraction of Istanbul. I would say kind of the off the beaten path destination within the city limit. I would definitely go here in summer or the beginning of autumn when it's dry season, basically. So right now we are returning to the base to prepare for new adventures. Stay tuned.